Hi there. So my name is Andrea Parker, and I was a teacher for 20 years in K-12 education. Um, I've done interviews for uh, entry admission to private education schools. Um, I'm currently a project director at a nonprofit that um, focuses on work between in the set at the intersection of special education and child welfare. So I do also interview um, for positions and openings on our team. I also like to think of myself as a, uh, a Jebai thought leader. So justice, equity, belonging, and, in and inclusion. And I'll talk more about that later. Thank you so much for having me here. Absolutely. Thank you for being here, Andrea. And you've certainly had a wealth of experience interviewing in the education space from K-12 to higher education and also um, interviewing for careers. So I'm curious, what would be your favorite question to ask? I love that question, Jenny. And these are actually borrowed from interviews that I have undergone myself. So this question came from the New York City Department of Education, and the question came towards the end of the interview, and it was, what brings you joy when working on a team? Um, and I loved that question because it really helped me to not only reflect on that, but to know what they value as a team and what's important. So I like to ask that question to candidates as well, because I want to hear not only what they're interested in um, professionally, but also just what really makes them um, shine and glimmer. Yeah, I love that. What brings you joy? And it really gives you a glimpse of sort of the well-roundedness of the candidate. And I know earlier you mentioned you're a Jebi, did I say it correctly? Which stands for Justice, Equity, Belonging, and Inclusion. Um, you're a thought leader in very much this space. So how do you assess a student's cultural awareness or their sense of social responsibility? Yeah, that's a great question, Jenny. I definitely be asking um, candidates, whether they're for internships or admission to a program or at, for a, a entry level job position. Um, so that's you all listening to this, uh, the young adults between the ages of, you know, maybe 14 and 22. Um, guidance counselors and parents and caregivers that might be watching this, um, you know, it's, I, I want to hear from my candidates that they have interacted with people and folks from all backgrounds and that um, I purposefully do not have the D for diversity in that, um, you know, Jebi, because I feel like it's very overused. It's a fact that we all are, that we are all very diverse. And I wanna hear that um, in the candidates' responses in terms of what sorts of folks they've interacted with, from what geographic locations, from what linguistic backgrounds, from what socioeconomic backgrounds, um, you know, any spirituality that they've come in contact with. And so I really, I really wanna know that these individuals um, not only work, but also thrive in diverse environments. And something that's really important, um, I think, to develop at the early stage. So when we're, you know, when we're applying for an undergrad program or an early entry level position is the ability to confront and address conflict or problems without getting defensive, or at least recognizing our defensiveness and working through it. So I'm going to purposefully ask questions that might trigger slightly the, and I would preface it with that, it might trigger slightly the candidate and the purpose is to see, you know, how they respond. And it, it is that more of a, like a behavioral question. Um, and, and if the individual doesn't have that, you know, cultural awareness and background, then I need to know how we're going to get there together. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about how to get there. Um, I, I'm thinking, you know, for someone who is located or living in a rural um, location, right, you don't necessarily have sort of the opportunity to be exposed from a day to day basis for those students, right, and their parents, what can they do to showcase the fact that they are, you know, they have open mindedness and this inclusion mindset, um, and culture and social, you know, heritage. Absolutely. I love that question. Thank you for asking it. Um, 
I think, first of all, in an interview, it's also very important to make the candidate feel comfortable. So if this is someone that we can see coming from that background to understand that internet connectivity is not a given. Um, so, you know, we can't assume that they may have had access to <clears throat> videos, podcasts that might help them to extend their exposure beyond their own community. But, um, you know, definitely knowing that and also asking in what ways has the candidate um, you know, tried or made an effort to learn about cultures or communities outside of their own community. And then I might even provide, especially with the younger candidates, might even provide some, you know, some some prompts or some assistance there in terms of like, you know, do you do you go to the local library? Um, you know, have you um, attended things outside of your community in terms of like conferences or sessions? Um, you know, because we don't know what we don't know. And it's important to, to, to know that and own that and look for ways to grow and learn and, and be open-minded. Yeah, and I love how concrete um, the examples you're giving, right? It's almost like, it's not just an interview with you. It's it's almost learning, a learning process and education in itself uh, because you literally just supplied a number of ways that we can be exposed, right? And to differences that are outside of ourselves. So I love that. And behavioral questions are so key. I also do that as well, right? Um, you can really read the social cues of, of the other person, really understand how self-aware they are and these conflicting situations and what their real takeaways are just by the way they, you know, show up and talk. Yeah, um, I love how you recap that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. What about, tell me about some, you know, interview experiences that you've had, you know, that weren't quite successful. And I'm curious, like, what are the like stumbling blocks and, you know, why would it, was it viewed as unsuccessful for you? So just one clarifying question, Jenny, do you mean um, candidates that I've interviewed that were not successful or my own personal interviewing experience? Because I can speak to either. That's true. Your choice then. Okay. All right. So I think what's closer, well, I'll, I'll give an example of both. Um, you know, I once had a candidate that um, kind of didn't really stay focused on the questions and was going off on a lot of tangents. And although we all do that when we're speaking candidly to some extent, um, you know, I think that led myself, but also more my, the team members that were part of the kind of um, interviewing committee, um, you know, to wonder how focused, um, you know, or how, because because part of the job was actually taking support calls and kind of um, driving the, the person needing support and, and kind of guiding their rambling. <laughs> so, you know, we want somebody who can recognize their own, their own rambling, and it didn't really seem like that was the case. My own personal experience, I feel like sometimes I've spent, and I have done a lot of interviewing, let me tell you, with a lot of organizations myself and everything from public, corporate, private, nonprofit, state agencies. So I think I spend a lot of time researching the organization and a lot of times I'm not spending enough time writing or audio recording how what's on my resume aligns to the job description. So for example, if in, in the job description, they're wanting me to facilitate affinity groups, right? Then I need to really speak to how I've done that. And they might not ask me, they're not gonna ask me that concrete and clear of a question, right? They're gonna say, how do you bring communities together Mm -hmm. Right. How do you provide spaces for folks to work out uh, to, to work on their own identities? And then that's when that when I speak about that and, and, and on the, I've always found it personally. And I'm speaking again to all of you watching this, that I'm somebody that I show up very good on paper. But when it actually comes to interviewing and that thinking on the spot, it's really hard. So what I need to do in the future is to have really clearly mapped out what's on my resume with what they're asking in the job description, just so that if that question doesn't come specifically, I know where and how to incorporate the response they're looking for. Wow, this is so insightful. And thank you for, you know, even being, you know, open uh, about sharing your experience as an interviewee, as well as an interviewer. And it's it's so incredibly important that we think we know ourselves. Obviously, obviously, we wrote the resume and we know who we are, but when it comes to really 
concretely and concisely portray that in an interview, especially when stakes are high, adrenaline's running, you know, it gets all jumbled up. And the fact that, you know, you're, you're mentioning, we really need to take it one step further and really appeal to the specific context of that one particular interview, um, you know, description, whether it's for a specific school or a specific role, that is so important. So what I might, one of my biggest takeaway from hearing you is, you know, definitely record yourself, take some notes and really outline it almost like an essay so that we have this mental map of what we're going to say and the hot, you know, things to hit. So that's really good. And that actually goes into my next question, which you, you know, you've already given it to us. But are there other things that you wish you knew as an interviewee, whether it's interviewing for school or for a job? Definitely, for sure. And that last question and your response, your recapping of it is a great segue into this, because I wish I knew earlier on that particularly, you know, at the mid career stage um, and, and really at any time, it's important for the it's a good thing when the interview becomes a discussion. When it's not just question, answer, question, answer, that it feels like it's weaving and weaving together and flowing, um, that that's a very, very good sign. And you can, you, can, you can tell when it's happening. And when you leave, you know the interview has been successful. And I'll end with, you know, another question that somebody recently asked me that I just loved. And I feel I could have done a better job answering when they, at the end, said, tell us something that's not on your resume. Yep. And so what I shared was like this cool fact about me that people always find really interesting, which is that I played on the 2004 Spanish Beach Ultimate World Championship team. Oh, so my granted, sorry, my dog's squeaking in the background. Granted, that's a really cool fact, but but I could have done a better job at weaving it into the rest of the discussion like, you know, and ultimate Frisbee is really important for building community. It's a huge part of the values that underpin ultimate Frisbee, something like that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, wow. Amazing. <laughs> talent. Um, and yes, if somehow there's a way of tying it in and I love that what you're saying is, you know, uh, an interview is successful when it's becoming a dialogue, a conversation of back and forth. And, you know, as someone who interviews so much as well, I can certainly tell you that's what I appreciate as an interviewer, where I'm learning something, I'm intrigued, and I'm asking you questions, I'm following up, and you're providing more and more unpeeling of who you are at the core. And yes, uh, how cool would it be then that conversation really turns into, you know, ultimate and how that relates to, you know, all the bullet points, right, in that job description or the skill sets that are needed, and then some more, right, that are relevant to it. That That is amazing. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time today to share your wealth of experience. And I encourage everyone to look up Andrea. You also provide one-on-one um, -on -one consulting, right? I do. I provide one-on-one -on -one consulting largely for schools and districts that are really uh, committed to family, school, and community engagement and partnerships. So that's that's my that's my lane. And thank you so much, Jenny. Thanks for having me here.